get started. So welcome. It's Valentine's Day and we're going to show some love. I know a lot of us um, are great at taking care of our families and our friends and our real estate teams and our business partners and all the things. And sometimes we forget about ourselves. So we thought on Valentine's Day, that would be the perfect time to talk about personal goals and how do you develop your personal goals and all of that stuff. So before we get started, I'm going to ask Brooke to drop in the link. We always give you our upcoming calendar um, while we're waiting for people to hop on. So I wanted to let you know our next um, class, our next virtual class is March 6th. Jerrica will be teaching low cost, high return client and recruiting events. On March 14th will be our next Coffee with Christy, and we have an awesome guest for that, who is Anna Kruger, um, who will be talking about lead prospecting, follow-up, tracking, and conversion, which I know are super hot topics as we're all trying to generate business. March 20th, I will be teaching um, our newest class in the leadership track, which is Coach Them Up or Coach Them Out. So if you lead others, um, and are looking to be a better leader, I'd love to see you in that class. April 17th and 18th, we have 10 Secrets of a Mega EA. In May, we will have Systems Are Sexy with Jerrica Contos. And then in July, we will be launching the Ops Boss Academy. So um, if you took Practically a Boss, it is more of that and on a deeper level. And if you haven't, it's a great um, class for either those who are new, newer to the business, or those who teach and coach and train new people coming onto their team in administrative roles. And then of course we have the retreat in October. So let's get to today's topic. Welcome, I'm Christy Belt Grossman. I am the owner of Ops Boss Coaching. And today is Coffee with Christy. If you have not joined us before, Coffee with Christy is really just our coaches round table and masterminding area. We um, have a great coaching team and we love to talk amongst ourselves and push each other to be our best and learn from one another. And so we thought instead of just having a closed mastermind with our coaching team, we would open these masterminds up to the entire community. So we're gonna invite you into the discussion today. If you have something to contribute, please feel free to contribute because we are not the authority. This is not a class. This is just meant to be a mastermind. So I'm gonna start off by introducing um, the coaches that are joining us today. Uh, we have Jerrica Contos, Elizabeth Gilbert, and Hannah Perky. So Jerrica, you want to introduce yourself and maybe tell us your role at Ops Boss and your role outside of Ops Boss. Sure. Um, so I'm Jerrica Contos. I'm a coach, trainer, and consultant with Ops Boss Coaching. Um, I'm also the director of operations for uh, Michael Ferraro, who is a luxury realtor and serial entrepreneur, um, crazy, fast-paced uh, rainmaker in Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, and I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. Awesome. Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Kilbert. Um, I am a coach and group coach with Ops Boss. Um, let's see, I own a TC business in Kansas City, Missouri, and I am a member concierge for the GoBundance membership community. Awesome. And Hannah Perky. Yeah, my name is Hannah Perky. I'm a one on one coach with Ops Boss and um, CEO of Evelo Team with Keller Williams Realty. We service Central Indiana and um, do some other investing outside of that, and a mom and wife to a realtor. Awesome. Okay, good. So we have lots of different perspectives today. And we are going to talk about personal goals. And I know it's kind of a strange time of year, February, but I think we forget about ourselves in today's Valentine's Day. So we're going to love on ourselves today. And as much as all of us are very focused on business, our business goals are not why, we, why we're why we here in life, right? Our personal goals are what fuel our business goals. And so we thought, well, let's spend some time talking about our personal goals. So we've got a bunch of questions we're going to roll through. You guys feel free to use the chat. We have a small group today. So if you want to come on camera and ask questions or contribute, feel free to do that. I am going to start with going back a little ways. And our first question I'm going to throw out to coaches is, what do you do before you set your personal goals? Because we don't just sit down and go, oh, these are good. this is what I'm going to achieve this year on the personal side. What are some of the things that you guys do before you start working on your personal goals? 
Whoever wants to jump in, I'll let you jump in. Yeah, I'll jump in on that one. So when I came over to real estate, I remember the idea of personal goals. I mean, I had personal goals, right? But like thinking and dreaming about them, I was like, I don't know. No one's ever asked me before. Um, so I think some of the habits we've gotten into, and we do this with our team as well, is like really one, let's reflect on what we accomplished, what felt good for this past year, maybe what didn't feel good, what's important to us. Um, but then really to dream big, uh, Terrence and I had gone to a retreat a few years ago and one of the activities they had us do was look at like forever in let's say the area of family or the area of health and then 30 years, 20 years, all the way back to one year. That made it way easier because I'm like, okay, if we say one year, I think sometimes I get overwhelmed, but if you said, okay, if we're sitting here in 25 years, tell me about your kids. What has that looked like for your family? Then I can start to journal. So I think journaling is a big part of that is getting all the notes down of anything you could think of before you try to nail down what the actual goal is. And I love that. I love the forever part. And if you are, I know some ops bosses struggle with going really big picture and going really far out. That seems really big and overwhelming one of the things I like to do is think about, well, when I'm this age or when I'm at this milestone, so it might be when I turn 40, what are my, you know, where do I want to be? When I retire, where do I want to be? When I become an empty nester, where do I want to be? Those kind of things. So you can use, you know, milestones or ages to help you get a little more finite in that thinking. Awesome. What else, what other th um, things do you guys do? to, uh, before you set your goals? I, um, think about like where the friction exists in my day to day. So like, where are like the points of contention for me? Do I feel like I'm rushing off to work? Do I feel like I'm missing my workouts and I'm disappointed? Do I feel like I'm, you know, like I think about what is the, I zoom out like Hannah does and I go, you know, five to 10 years out and I narrow back in, but I also think about the day to day and I say, okay, great. Like, you know, oh, well, I wanted to go to dinner with a friend and I didn't really feel like it was in my budget. What can I do this year to make sure that it's in my budget? You know, things like that. I love that word friction. Where's the friction in my day to day? That was a great question. Awesome. Elizabeth, I see head nodding. Yeah, I'm usually looking back at the year before or finding some reflection exercise. I love asking questions. I also love answering questions. So I try to find, and I, I usually don't do the same um, reflection questions. I'll just go search on Pinterest or I'll find some sort of reflection exercise to do. And then I get ideas based on the answers that I generate from the reflection questions. Yeah. And I think that's actually a really good point. Um, some of us like routine, and I think at this point of reflection is a good time to get outside your routine, to free yourself from the boundaries that sometimes the routine creates. Um, one of the things that I like doing is, um, or that I've done on and off over the past couple of years is the wheel of life exercise where you've got the, um, I don't know, Brooke, maybe you can put the link in. It's um, classtools.net backslash life wheel. Um, it's a super easy area and you choose the 10 areas of your life or however many it is, and you rank yourself one to 10, and then it gives you a wheel. If everything was a 10, your wheel would be rolling really evenly, right? Like a tire on a car. Low in certain areas, that tire on your car is going to be bumpy. And so I kind of look at those and go, well, if this, which one do I want to work on? that would maybe spread over to the other areas. So for example, if I work on my health, I'm actually gonna raise the number in multiple areas because if I'm more healthy, I'll have more energy at work and I'll be able to do things with my family and other things like that. So that's one thing. Um, one of the other things I would say is I write out my values and I ask myself if my actions are in alignment with my values. Because I've realized over time that I have been really, really out of alignment with my values, what I say my values are versus what I'm actually doing. So I might say my values are family, but how much time am I actually spending with my family? So I, I, I write out my values. 
And then um, I love those of you, if, I don't know if any of you, I think a handful of you were at the um, Ops Boss Leader Retreat last year, the exercise that Stephanie Brackett gave us regarding evaluating the people in your inner circle and are there any changes that I need to make in terms of how much time and who I'm spending my time with. Um, and then lastly, I ask myself, based on my, as Hannah calls it, my forever exercise, are there habits I need to develop? Are there skills I need to develop? Is there any learning that I need? And so that kind of helps me with my personal goals as well. Um, one of the things we do, and Hannah, I think you and Terrence do this too, is you guys do a couples retreat. I think for me, it's been important to get input from others when I'm working on my personal goals. And the two people I usually ask for that is my husband, because he's my best friend, and then my best friend outside of my marriage, my um, college roommate. So I kind of bounce my personal goals and you know, achievements and struggles off the two people that I care about the most. Um, Hannah, did you guys do, do you guys do couples retreat every year? We don't do it every year, but so we've done it like physically where we went to Texas and did it. And I think that was a good training piece. And so I know a lot of people have said, and I would attest to this, that you need to set aside some time to get away, even if it's like a day. Um, to get out of the norm. And Christy, I think to add to what you're saying about bouncing off of people, I do feel like the process too, I feel like Terrence and I will start to talk about things, but it's like a, sometimes a 60 day journey, like starting in November and then getting into the first of January where we're like, okay, we're good with these. It's not like we just come up and we're like, okay, we know what these are. It takes some time to figure out exactly what we want those to be. Yeah. I love I that. And it doesn't have to be a couple's retreat. It could be I just want some quiet time myself to go away, right? Or I could go with a group of girlfriends or whatever. It doesn't matter who you're going away with. But that I think that a way out of your usual environment is important for that. And I was going to say, too, the other thing that I do to prepare for setting my goals, too, is I get on the same page with my husband. Like, I have to make sure that my lifestyle goals are in line with his lifestyle goals. <laughs> so anything that I do for goal setting, he also does for his goal setting so that we can make sure that we're on the same page. Because if I'm trying to ramp up in business, like, you know, I'm like, well, are we going to hire a, a private chef or like <laughs> there's lifestyle things that need to happen? Yeah, I love that. Um, one of the things we do for our couples retreat, and we've done this for a number of years, I actually started doing it before Wendy and Jay Papazon started doing their couples retreat. Wendy had shared with me their questions a few years before that. We just go to the beach and we put poster boards up. Um, we go to the beach, get a condo, and in different rooms of the condo, we put poster boards. And each poster board has a different area relationships, family, recreation and fun, spirituality, financial, whatever it is. And we pour wine and we just get the markers out and walk around the rooms for a couple of hours and just draw pictures, write questions, write things we're happy about, things we want to talk about, things that might be goals that we want to do. And then we don't even talk about them that day. We bring them home. And then a couple weeks after that, we keep them up in our bathroom up on the mirrors so we can keep writing on them. And then a couple weeks after that, we actually will sit down and say, hey, let's actually talk about this. Are these goals that we actually want to do? What does this mean to you? That kind of thing. So it doesn't have to be like a big retreat that you sign up to do. Right. All right. Anything else on preparation before we go on to next question? Awesome. If you guys have stuff you want um, that you do, oh, I forgot to check the chat. And um, feel free to um, to put it in the chat because we do not have all the answers, and I know you guys are doing some awesome things too. So let's go on to next question. So the next question was around setting meaningful goals. Um, how do you go about identifying goals that really resonate with your values and aspirations? Can you share an example of a goal you set in the past that had a profound impact on your life? And then maybe we'll share some 2024 personal goals so we can give people ideas for their own goals. So that was three really big questions, but 
feel free to jump into whichever answer you want to do. You know, when it comes to identifying goals that resonate, um, it you find what you look for. So you have to be, it's almost like a mini quest that I go on to say, what, what do I want my life to look like? And, and it's actually envisioning that future and saying, what does it take to get there? And that's how I'm always, I'm always looking for how will my life be enriched? What will be meaningful about what's meaningful about that to me? And it, it's kind of like, you just know it, that intuition, that gut feeling of, well, if I had that, if I could create that, if I brought that into my life, that would be freaking awesome. And I like, and that's what I go for. It's like the one that, that really stands out. That's what I go for. Love it. I also too will ask myself, um, if I'm saying yes to this, what am I saying no to? And what do I have to say no to to say yes to this? Um, and I really do look again, like I can be, I can live very much in the zoomed out space. So my goal setting challenge is always like zooming in on what does the day to day look like? Um, and so things, you know, like I, I guess one goal that we set that was profound for us, um, we, my husband and I decided that we wanted to be debt free before we bought a house. So we wanted to pay off all of our student loans, our cars, like all that stuff so that we could not have any lifestyle changes when we actually bought a house. Um, that was like our end goal. Like we wanted to be able to have a house and have all the stuff while we had it too. We didn't want to be house poor. Um, and so it started out with the goal of buying a house and it just kind of evolved into like, okay, great. Well, I mean, this was a number of years ago. So it's like, you know, we were like, well, if it looks like this, then we can't do this, right? We're asking that question. If we say yes to this, what are we saying no to? And so, you know, that's how that kind of evolved. And, and we ended up making massive lifestyle changes. We lived in a studio apartment for um, what ended up being two years because of COVID. <laughs> and we survived COVID in a studio apartment, not at all part of the plan, but we did it. Um, and actually, because of that, it ended up being a blessing in disguise, because we ended up being able to buy two properties in two years, which was not something that we could have ever imagined. What started as just, we want to buy a house start like ended up with we bought two in two years and then even now a number of years later you know that still had an impact on me because we were able to set up our finances in such an amazing way for to give us freedom which is what we wanted that uh when my team shut down last year i actually got to spend the entire year finding for the right next opportunity and i didn't have to rush into my next step because i had set myself up with success so many years ago living in that apartment and it was a brutal couple of years, more brutal than I could have ever imagined. Um, and that's partially what prompts my now, my day to day. Can I actually stomach this? <laughs> because. But, but that all of that came from your clarity on your values. Right. That freedom was a value. Financial freedom was about like you were very clear on what your values were up front. And I think that's why that values part of the preparation is so important. Mm -hmm. Because I think if we're not clear in our values, we end up with should goals. Oh, I should put this down. And then you put goals and you and you're looking at your goals every month and you're like, I don't have any like Elizabeth calls it the freaking awesome factor. There's no freaking awesome or if if it's not making your heart go, yeah, yeah, I feel good about this, then it's not a goal in alignment with your, you know, your values and your aspirations. So that was, that was a great example. Hannah, what do you want to add? Hmm. Um, I think so, Jerrica, when you're talking about that decision making, right, of what we're saying yes and no to, I think a lot of times what I see in coaching when someone's new to this process is they put all the things right because we're like, hey, this is where we want to be. And so I think it is saying, OK, if there's six things you want to accomplish in health, um, let's put them in order. Right. What's the number one thing? And let's focus in on that. Because I think what you don't want to happen is on, let's say you set your goals and start them January 1st, that you wake up and you have 15 new habits you need to form, right? It is a incremental change. And the fact that we're having this discussion is very different than the majority of the world. So I think we have to start out and be like, okay, awesome. We're setting the goals and let's start with baby steps so that we're successful and we can feel rewarded in that. And I think that's something I've learned to do is say, okay, let's choose something or a thing to start with. And if we're making awesome progress, great. Let's add more to it. Um, I think that's really important to do. 
I tend to use December as my test run for my personal goals. Yeah, and I put I, things yeah. down that I'm kind of thinking about onto my 411. I use a 411. And if I get to the end of December and I'm like, I got nothing, I, I'll put things down and I get to the end of the month and like, I'm not hitting it. I'm like, okay, I have to ask myself the question, is this truly a goal? And is it truly a goal or not truly a goal? Or do I need a different accountability around this if it truly is a goal, one or the other? Um, so yeah, sometimes I have goals that are like, I just put that down. I'll give you an example. Like people might put down, I'm going to read, you know, 12 books this year. Great. I, I've read 12 books. I've read 50 books in a year. I've read a book every week, checked them off the list and got to the end of the year and implemented absolutely nothing from them. So those that was a should goal. Oh, it sounds good. I'll put that down. Now my goal around reading a book might be I'm actually going to read it, make notes from it and implement something before I read the next book. So therefore, I'm still on my same book right now, just so you know, being human from January. <laughs> and Christy, I think social media probably influences a lot on those should goals, right? Because like that book one's a great one. I think a lot of us are readers. And my my goal says something like read a part of so many books because I get bored with books. I'm like, I got what I needed and I'm moving on. But I used to force myself to read to the end so that I could check it off my list. And so my goal was wrong in how it was mapped out. So I think sometimes you look and you say, okay, is that accomplishing what I want for the end, right? Is it getting me to where I want to be? What's the reason for the goal, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, goal should, the goal should be moving you towards something else. Right. Um, I will give you two examples of personal or two examples of goals that I set in the past that had a profound impact on my life. Um, those of you who have attended the 10 secrets class will know the first one that I'm going to say, which is the first time I set a goal to spend um, three weeks in Paris on vacation completely changed my life because I realized that it was actually possible. And I thought it was a, going to be a one-time trip. And once I did it, I realized I wanted to do this indefinitely and spend a month in Paris, not working every year. And that has changed my life because my mind stretched the possibility. And once it's stretched, it doesn't stretch back. Right. So I'll be spending May in Paris again this year because of a goal that I set in 2014. Um, Another goal that profoundly changed my life was to try something new that I didn't think I would like, but I felt called to do. So my goals are not always around achieving something. Sometimes it might be trying something new or experimenting with something. And that goal was someone who asked me for 12 months straight to coach them. And at the time I was teaching and I had never coached before and I said no for a whole year and I finally said yes and set a goal to take one coaching client. And from that came Ops Boss Coaching with 12 um, team members and completely changed my life and passion about what I'm doing. So I would encourage you to be creative with your goals of maybe your goal is try something new, or it could be unspecific, like establish a new health habit, but you don't know specifically what it's going to be. So maybe in January, I try a certain type of exercise, or I try a new nutrition program or something like that. It doesn't have to be completely thought out at the beginning of the year. You know, I'll um, add something to that. Christy, um, you know, I, I know a lot of us have heard begin with the end in mind. Well, we don't always know what the end is going to be. And sometimes we just start something because it sounds cool. What I wrote down um, was an example of a goal that changed my life was starting my blog, The Assistant Files. My only intention there was to share knowledge that I had by writing a blog post twice a week. And I did that for two years straight. And that ended up, Christy and I connected, I joined Ops Boss Coaching. Um, the income that I made from that has had a profound effect on my financial life, including um, my goal this year to go to Sedona for our 25th anniversary and spend it there on a really nice vacation. Well, I can do that because forever ago, I started a blog. 
I had no idea it was going to lead to this. I just thought it would be fun. So there's nothing wrong with setting it, you know, saying, I'm going to try this. I'm going to start doing this and I'll see where it takes me. I love that. And it, it makes me think about gifts and talents. What are your gifts and talents? Where where do you get enjoyment? Where do you have fun? Where are other people telling you, oh, Elizabeth, you're so great at this. You know, oh, you should do more of that. Maybe those are, are ways that you're being spoken to and, and there's goals there. Jerrica, what were you going to add? I was just going to say too, I think that sometimes we plan our goals. Maybe this is just me, so I shouldn't say we. Um, I set my goals as like punishments, right? It's like the hard stuff, like saving money, working out, meal planning, right? Like that stuff. And my whole life changed when I started setting fun goals. So like how many girl trips am I going on? Mm -hmm. And like how, like I had a goal one time that was to make someone's day once a week. Like I wanted to like make someone feel like a million bucks once a week, whether that was, you know, holding the door for them or complimenting them or something like, and that was just like at the front of my mind. Um, and I think that like, sometimes we think of them as like, maybe it's me. Cause again, cause I'm hard, hard high D as like a result. Um, I always focus on, I've now switched my goals to being focused on the activity instead. So I'm not worried necessarily about what the outcome is. I'm worried about what is the activity that I'm going to do on the daily to weekly basis. And I think that can be a good way too. You never know where that's going to get you. Um, you know, so. you know, I'll add to that, Jerica. I'm like, sometimes too, you don't know what the activity will be to accomplish that. And that's okay too. Yeah. Um, last year I had one goal to make my husband feel like a priority because I'm a high achiever. So work sometimes comes in the way of that. And I was like, I don't know what that means. And so each month it was like looking at, okay, how can I tangibly make that happen? And I'm sure that's how it felt when you were trying to make someone's day, right? Of like, you don't know what that is. But it gives us um, focus each week to then get creative and to, um, to think on that item and figure out what that may look like in action. Love that. Any personal goals? If you guys are, li- all of the of you who are listening, um, feel free to chime into the chat with ideas of personal goals that you're thinking about doing this year. Are there any personal goals you guys want to share to give ideas to um, that you have for 2024 that might give ideas to people who are listening? Sure. I have, so we adopted a um, rescue dog in August um, and he, we're working on training with him. I want to be able to take him anywhere, which we currently cannot. (laughs) So my goal is to take him to 52 new places. So even my dog has a goal this year. (laughs) And I love that his goal is specific, measurable, achievable, results oriented. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, he's going to go to fifty new places. He's already gone to eight new places. He's done a great job every single time, and every time it gets easier, um, which is great. That was the goal. I also, again, I focus on the activity, not the results. I have fifty-two financial meetings with my husband this year. Um, You know, I don't necessarily like to say like once a week or once a month or whatever because life happens. Um, so having a set number allows me to be flexible. Same thing with my dog. I may not have a week where I can take him somewhere new, but maybe, you know, twice in one week, I can take him to two different parks and like that still fulfills the goal. Um, and then I do, uh, I have a plan for one weekend off every single month with no plans. So it's blocked off on my calendar. I've already gone through my whole calendar. I have one month that is like completely blocked that says no plans allowed. Love that. Um, I, Sorry, I was going to say um, my parents, one of the things I noticed is my mom would oftentimes be saying like, Hannah's always so busy. Um, she helps to care for our kids. And so usually I'm running in or out to pick up the kids. So I had set a goal to make sure I grab time with my mom and dad separate, just spend time with them each month. So then what I'm doing is like, we went Goodwill shopping. I planned that last week because if you guys know me, I love um thrift shopping. So we did that. I have um, brunch scheduled with my dad next week. So I'm being more intentional to map those things out with them. Um, And then with my kids, one of the things on our spiritual goals we're focusing on this year is I have a seven and a four-year-old. So they're getting um, two ages where we can spend more time. So we're looking at how can 
us as parents work on their faith development. So that's where I say the activities. I don't know that each month. So like last month, we were trying to memorize a verse with motions at bedtime. Um, so each month, I don't know what that will be, but we just, we got through last year and we're like, oh, we kind of felt like we didn't really focus on that besides going to church. So we're trying to find intentional different things to do each month with them. I love that when we write it down, we're so much more likely to do it, right? It's like- right your intention didn't change. You always have the intention of being a great mom and passing your faith down to your kids. But because you have a goal, even if it's unspecific, you still have a goal that you're holding yourself accountable to. You're more likely to take action. That was a great example of that. Um, What else? I had a lifestyle slash adventure goal um, this year. And I, this was kind of like a brainstorm, but I'm, I'm loving my answers. So um, it was to travel and stay overnight once per quarter. So whether that's, um, you know, down to, we like going to the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. Um, We have our Sedona trip planned. I have two more that I need to plan. Probably one is going to be to get to Springfield, Missouri, because they just built a Bucky's there. I don't know if you know what Bucky's is, but that's where we're going. Um, one was to go to a comic convention, like a comic con, because we've never been. And I'm like, that is easy. I, we can do that. Um, and I have a goal to read a whole novel in one day, just just to see if I can. I've done it in the That's past, good. like over the summer, like, like just really get into a juicy novel, fiction book, and sit and do nothing except read a book for the whole day is like... If I could do that every day, that would be my dream life. But (laughs) once a year sounds perfect. Well, you probably could because we have an op. One of our admin at Ops Bosses, Sheila, is a proofreader. So (laughs) proofreader for audiobooks. She's a proofreader for audiobooks. Yeah. So yeah, there's an opportunity there. (laughs) Love that. Um, I will say one of the goals that I have on my personal um, personal goals. We tend to. I tend to kind of be real general sometimes. So to take the general goal of I'm a new grandmother and I want to have a great relationship with my grandson. And so how do you turn out into a goal? I just have said, I want to see Levin 48 times this year, which is basically every week, but then we're in Paris for a month. Now I will tell you, we've had snow and illness over the past two months And if I didn't have that written on my goal sheet, I would not have FaceTimed him. But we've had a couple of great FaceTimes this year. And he just thinks it's so fun because he's fascinated with the cell phone. So having that written goal has been awesome. Um, Michelle says she's the priority this year. I'm a full-time single mom of two boys, 12 and four. They are taking care of. They're happy. My mental health is important. And I'm more than just their mom. I love that. I love that, Michelle. I think we all feel that same way because we're always taking care of everyone else and it's even harder being a single mom. So good for you. Goals. She has a goal to get her license, having me time and traveling weekend solo. Love it. Love it. Um, Oh, David, did David, did he pop out? I don't think he's here anymore. Okay. I must move along. Feel guilty. Like I'm eavesdropping on your fine group. I think we have, uh, he's a rainmaker. We welcome rainmakers, business owners, all ops people. Okay, let's go on to planning tools and methods you find most effective when you're setting out your goals. So how are you guys managing your goals? 12 week year, 411, Google Doc, what are you doing? I like live by my 411. When I was answering your question, I have it pulled up on the screen. So um, I look at it. My, my activities are on Friday. I look ahead to the week and see, is it already on my calendar or do I need to schedule something to prep for the next seven days? And then on Friday, I get the great pleasure of marking the things off that I've completed. And it also gives me the weekend if there's some things I need to catch up on. Um, one of my teammates had, because I have my team doing 411s, my ops team, um, she had used a Canva template to make this cool sticky note background per month. Um, which I thought was really cool to remind her throughout the week, because I do think, you know, I don't always have that tab up on my screen, but your backdrop's always there. So um, that's an idea I want to implement to help in the process as well. 
Oh, I love that. And for people who don't know what a 411 is, what's a 411? So a 411 is, it basically is a like a spreadsheet um, plan, at least the template I use is a spreadsheet and it has your annual goals across the top. And then the next section has what you're doing for the month. And then it's broken down into the four weeks. And so it's really like a to-do list. If you like a paper planner, it's very similar to that process of mapping out your month and figuring out what you need to accomplish each week. And it's broken down into areas of um, business, job, finances, health, um, intellectual, family, spiritual. You can add or take away as you so please. Awesome. Jerrica, what are you using? I was a very religious 411 user and I actually switched like mid-year last year. It just stopped working for me one day. I woke up and was like, this is too rigid for me. Um, and so I use a drop form. So I get a drop form in my email every single day where I have to like submit. It will ask me like a specific question. Like, did you take Duke to a new place? Where did you take Duke this week? Where did you, whatever, like, did you do cardio or did you do strength training? And it's just like check box, check, check, check. Um, and that's just how I generally, um, keep on track. Cause it's right in my face at the top of my email every week, every day. Sorry. You're like the queen of jots. Elizabeth. <laughs> planning and um, tools, methods, what are you yeah. using? Yeah, Christy, you and I talked about this just the other day that 411 has just not been my cup of tea. I've tried it a few times, hasn't really worked, but then what I'm doing now isn't really working either. So maybe I do need to go back to a 411. Um, I have generally in the past used mind maps to plot what that, um, what the goal looks like. I now have a vision board. Um, I've done GPS where you do goal priority strategies. Um, I have that for my health. And um, for my health goals, that translated into a habit tracker. So if I say I'm going to only drink alcohol two times a month, my habit tracker says my goal is two for the month. And every time I do it, I put an X in the spreadsheet. So no more than two, but then for something like exercise, I want to exercise 20 times this month. And every, so I look at that every morning, go, what did I do yesterday? That's on this list, mark it or leave it unmarked. And that's how I'm tracking. So let's talk a little bit about that. What else do we want to add around how do your goals show up on your calendar or in other places? I'll start with that for myself. Um, I use Brevity. We use Brevity to run Ops Boss. And so all my tasks, whether they're work or personal, show up on my task management in Brevity. So if I have a daily, I have a daily recurring task. Right now I'm using the Halo app, for example, to work on reestablishing prayer routines it literally comes up every single day. And since I'm an ops boss, it drives me nuts not to be able to check it off until I do it. So I have mine in brevity. Um, I have my planning time also like Hannah on Friday, um, where I plan for the following week. And then on Saturday is when I actually sit down with my accountability partner and do my 411. What do you guys want to add around calendar and tracking? I have mine time blocked. So like all of my personal goal stuff is time blocked in purple. It's in like a different color. So it stands out in my calendar. And then I actually have a plugin in my Gmail that tracks how many hours I spent um, like on specific tasks and you can set different codes in there. So like, because all my personal stuff is purple, I get like a number of personal hours spent throughout the week. And so I like to try to see my business and my personal time block hours, you know, at a reasonable ratio. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> which we know they, they probably weren't for January <laughs> and for January not so much <laughs> work in progress we're human all right what else Hannah or Elizabeth anything on calendars or um I mean I tracking? use my yeah I use my calendar I get a little overwhelmed you know with calendars that are like booked like this is exercise quite like I can't do that so there's things I choose not to from that perspective that's a habit um, I know this is super basic and probably not a great training point, but I keep notes on my phone. So like last year I wanted to do so many, like walk so many miles and then sit ups and push ups. 
And it was just, my phone's always with me. So it was really easy for me to keep tally there so that on Friday when I did my planning, I'd reference that. Um, so I think whatever tool you're using already is what it sounds like is maybe where you should integrate some of those habit trackers into. Yeah, I do that in the notes on my phone too. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth, anything else to add? Yeah, a lot of mine, I don't put it on my calendar, but my morning routine is where a lot of mine happen. Um, whether, cause I have reading, journaling, exercising, like all that good stuff is on my habit tracker list of how many times I do them, but it's not on my calendar for the same reason, because if I booked that, I would just feel overwhelmed. So that's why I keep it separate in the habit tracker and just know every morning it, it's like a checklist. You just run down the list. Love it. Love it. Okay. Let's move on to another question we got, which is balancing ambition and dreaming big with realism. How do you strike a balance between challenging yourself with stretch goals and being realistic and not getting discouraged because they're stretched so far that no human in the world could achieve them? I mean, I think back to what Jerrica said earlier, I think you have to really consider how much time will this take and what is that replacing, right? I don't think any of us are like, we have so much time. We don't know what to do with it. So if we're adding a new habit, we have to figure out where is that going? Um, I think that's the first and foremost. And then I think we have to be really grace-filled with ourselves that we are not going to do 100%. Like, I know that's hard to say that and it almost sounds counterproductive, but we have to have grace. Like things are going to happen. We're going to get sick. Stuff's not going to go as smoothly as we thought. But regardless, if we work towards it, we're going to be further along than we were if we did not have that in place. Who else wants to add? I I really loved the idea of tiny habits. And when I think of something big that I want to achieve, um, like I have a weight loss goal and that feels overwhelming. And it's, um, it's actually been a struggle because there's things that are preventing me from losing weight right now. And, but I, I don't want to lose sight of the goal and I do want to keep the healthy habits. So if exercise is one of those healthy habits that helps contribute to weight loss or will, when I eliminate some of these challenges, um, I, I want to make sure that I keep that. But if I say I'm going to exercise for 45 minutes a day, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to do that. If I say the tiny habit is I'm going to put my exercise clothes on after I wake up in the morning, use the bathroom and get a drink of water. That's easy. All I have to do is put my exercise clothes on. What happens after that is I exercise. So the t- I go t- go small, go tiny. What's put it, or setting out your workout clothes the night before? I don't do that. I find it easier not to, but because when I'm going to bed, I'm like, no, nah, I just want to get to bed fast. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to prep for bed. I just want to get in bed and be asleep. Um, so yeah, how do you go small, Derica? How do you balance between thinking really big, stretching, and being ambitious, and being realistic? Um, I am very competitive and I like to win. And so most of my goals are very unrealistic (laughs) and I win anyway. (laughs) I think that that has actually been maybe my favorite thing that I've learned about myself through goal setting is that I'm actually capable of a lot more and I'm a lot more focused when I have a really big, hairy, scary goal. And not everybody is like that. Um, But that's the thing that keeps me motivated. I love the idea that someone thinks I can't do it. Um, because I like, that's the thing that makes me focused. I can go way small and I can do it and I can be detailed and I can be disciplined if someone thinks, or if I even think like, I can't do this. Like, I really want to prove that I can do it because I like to win. I love that because I think what you said is true. We have to know ourselves. And so you have to experiment and you may not be all one way or the other. You may not be the, oh, I have to have a big hairy goal all the time because it's going to push me. Or I have to go really small. You might be big on some things and small on some things, right? So what I tend to do is I like the really big goals too uh, because then they open your world like all of a sudden. And when I notice on my tracker that I'm just not cutting it, that's a sign to me that I've got to go way small. 
So I can take that goal and go away small. So for example, I told you I'm trying to use the Hallo app. I started out with January. I'm going to do it 28 times. I thought I was being good because I gave myself three days off. You know how many I did it? Three. And I'm like, okay. So the first week of February, I got to cut my goal down and I cut it way down and I still didn't cut it far enough down. Second week of February, I cut it down to three, three this week, and I'm finally on track and I'll build it back up. But I also like that big goal because it really motivates me to um, be able to do that. So I think the key is just knowing for yourself. I mean, we see this in business, right? With our real estate teams, with our agents setting production goals or salespeople setting production goals. Some people are super motivated by having really big goals and other people are really discouraged when they're not hitting whatever their goal is. And you've got to know that about everybody on your team as well as yourself. Okay, let's talk about overcoming obstacles and setbacks. What are your strategies for overcoming setbacks? When you're off track, how do you get back on track? I think of it the same way that I approach business when something goes wrong or didn't go as I expect or we fell short and I say, where do I fix the system? I do the exact same thing for my personal goals because I'm a firm believer. What is that James Clear quote? Your habits fall to the level of your systems. Um, and so I'm a firm believer of like, okay, great. Where do I have to fix the system for myself? Um, so like Elizabeth's example is perfect, right? Like what, how do I fix the system? Like, okay, I make sure that my workout flows are out. Like that's a way to fix the system. Um, and so that's how I approach it. I don't, my personal philosophy, I haven't always been like this. Um, but my personal philosophy today in 2024 is that, um, I'm okay with missing the mark if I'm really close. Yeah. And so instead of beating yourself up, it's let's figure out a new system because my system isn't working. Love that. I, I The way I answered this was I beat myself up for a while. And then when that doesn't work, I reset the goal. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, never, it never works. Beating myself up never works. And yet I have not learned my lesson. So there you go. Hannah? I mean, I think it's good to like stop and reflect though, right? I actually, am a, I'm a big nerd for this stuff. This is like my favorite topic probably. Um, but like at the end of the month, I love to stop and be like, okay, well, why didn't I do that for four weeks? Like what was going on? And Christy, I know you and I have had actual coaching conversations where she's like, why aren't you doing this? Like, let's figure out the reason behind it. Um, and then sometimes it's like, oh, this goal is not important or the goal is like unreasonable or there's not time, right? Like, let's find the reasoning so that we can, when we adjust, we adjust it the right way. I think too is important. Um, I'm like sitting here thinking about what I didn't get done in January and that I need to make sure that as I continue to pursue that, that I'm asking that question to myself. Yeah. So I either didn't have a system for it. I didn't have it on my calendar. I didn't have accountability around it. I find sometimes I have, I'm a very internally accountable person and there's certain areas where I need external accountability. I don't need it on everything, but in some areas. So maybe I have to put a different type of accountability in place. Um, anything else you want to add there on getting back on track? I mean, I think that's where the tracking becomes so important and having like a tracking system that really works and really resonates with you because it's the same thing that I share with my clients about time blocking. When we play red light, green light with our time blocks, you're not doing it from a place of judgment. That's why I don't actually make them do red, yellow, and green because those colors feel judgmental. I'm like, what you're doing is you're collecting information to improve the next week. And so the tracking on your goal, you're just collecting information. And that's why I also like to have it tracked on my calendar in addition to, because nine times out of 10, for me, it's a time or priority issue. Yeah, agree, agree, awesome. Okay, let's move to the flip side of setbacks to successes. Do you celebrate your achievements along the way? If you do, how do you do it? And if you do so, why is that important to you? Or do you just beat yourself up all the way along? <laughs> so I like to talk like my ops group. It's become really good for us to spend some of our meeting time talking about our personal goals because then we get to celebrate together, right? Because we are sharing and um, Michelle, I see you put that about accountability partners. And that was in my notes for the last question too. Like who else are you talking to your goals about? Um, 
as I said, I'm a nerd on this. I got my sister using our 411 form um, and she is not in real estate, but then we get to have calls and we get to talk about the stuff and we get to be like, yeah, we did that. Like we made movement on that. That's really cool. So I think creating your community of who you're willing to open up about those goals too, because I know some of them can be super personal. So I'd encourage you, like if you don't have one person, at least have one, if not a whole group that can celebrate with you in conversation um, that's one of the things I think is important. Love that. Yeah. And Michelle said that too, have accountability partners that match your habits. That's a really great one. I prefer gym at five 30, but show up better for others than for myself. That's a really great point, right? Some of us are internally, we'll show up for ourselves and some of us do better when we're accountable to don't want to let someone else down. Elizabeth, what's the, um, isn't there a, one of those assessments that's around that. There's a book around that. I can't think of the name of the book. Um, club. What is it, Crash. Michelle? The 5 a.m. club? No, they're uh, around the concept of whether you show up better for others or whether you show up better for yourself. There's uh, different behavioral profiles around that. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen that's Rubin. It. Thank you. Yeah. Just in case you're, y'all want to read that. Okay, celebrating. What else are you guys doing to celebrate? Are you celebrating? And if so, why is it important? There was a point where um, I was doing that. And in the past, I've rewarded myself with things. Um, I don't do that so much now. And I don't know why, because I, well, I do know why, because it works in the short term. It doesn't work for the long term. That's why. If I say I'm going to reward myself with a new pair of boots for exercising 30 times and then the 30 times happens and I get the boots, I don't reset it and go, okay, I'm going to go another 30 times and I'm going to get something else. Like, like that rewards enough to motivate me in the short term, but it's not, it's not big enough to create a long-term habit for me. Okay. Do you yeah, think, I think the... Oh, I was just going to ask, do you think the success of accomplishing it creates a reward enough in itself? Is that why maybe we aren't coming up with lots of things that we reward ourselves with? That was going to be my answer. <laughs> because well, celebration doesn't have to be a monetary yeah, true. reward either, yeah. right? Yeah. Celebration for me, I like, I personally, um, I do better with short term celebrations. So for example, I did my lead gen this morning. I get to go for a walk around the block and get some fresh air. I did my lead gen this morning or whatever habit that I'm working on. I get to spend 15 minutes planning what we're going to do while we're in Paris. Like it, it's sort of the carrot and the stick and it's not like a super expensive or whatever. It's yeah. just a mental like, oh, you get a positive reinforcement for developing this new hard thing that you just accomplished. I think that's a good point. Actually, I have a group chat with a couple of my um, friends that I grew up with and we will share, like we did a goal meeting this year. It was very fun. Um, they were like, okay, Jerrica, tell us what to do. <laughs> like you're making us do this, <laughs> 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 which I was fine with. But um, that's really the place that we go. And like when something awesome happens, it's the first place I go. I'm like, girls, guess what happened? And like that just becomes like a space where like we, you know, like we hype each other up and we celebrate together, similar to your ops team, Hannah, right? Like finding that place um, for that. And I think that's important because I think most of us are so eager to uh, applaud everyone else that we forget to celebrate ourselves. Um, I will tell you also on the, the tangible things like the boots or whatever, I do actually find that sometimes motivating. I had a group of um, accountability partners who were all, back when I was a DOO, who were other DOOs. And they pushed me to choose a tangible reward for some things that I was working on. They're like, you never reward yourself. You set the next goal before you even hit the goal. Once you know you're going to hit the goal, you've already set another goal and gone on to the next thing and you never celebrate yourself. So they forced me and I chose actually, I love jewelry and it was not expensive, but I told, chose affirmation bands with different like fearless or whatever on them. But now when I wear those, 
it's a reminder to myself, like, you can do hard things. Oh, yeah. Remember when you did this, this and this? That means you can do these new things that you're working on. So it's a, for me, it's empowering to um, do those. And I love that concept of celebrating others and celebrating together and being able, Jerica, I love that you can go and share and say, you know, I did this. That's awesome. I think it's important to do that. Okay, let's go on. We just have a few minutes left. Are you more likely to hit your business goals or your personal goals? And what have your ahas or learning been in that area? I kind of think that when you get paid to do something, you just do it. Like, like to me, there's no room for, well, I just didn't get it done. But that's like my high responsibility. So I don't, I don't really see business goals as an option. <laughs> it's like, that's your job. You just do it. Um, and maybe that's why I don't achieve my, as many personal goals as I do business objectives is that maybe that's a perception is that personal goals are optional. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds like mm. a good conversation, a further conversation, Elizabeth Gilbert. Yeah, <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> Jerrica, Hannah, Hannah, you're, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think it's been like a transition um, and some like developing through coaching, right? Because I think it is an expectation that you set goals in business for your job or for the business to grow. I don't think that the world always sees it of like, okay, how am I going to improve um, taking care of myself this year, right? Like that's all on me. And it sometimes seems selfish or abnormal. Um, and sometimes nobody else knows about it. I think that's the other thing is a lot of times the business goals, like we're talking about those, we have scheduled meetings. Um, but I'm like, if I don't get better as a mom, no one's going to say anything. No one's going to do anything. I'll feel guilty. Right. So I think that personal has been a struggle, but I think Christy, you're talking earlier about values. And I think that's where that was a real like wake up call to me of, okay, well, why am I not just as much focused on my spiritual goals, my family goals as I am business, because those actually matter way more. And so taking those business habits and applying them to the personal life has been amazing. I mean, I've really appreciated what it's done to not only impact, but how it's made me feel because I there's not the guilt factor now. It's like, Hey, these are really important and I'm focused on them and I'm a work in progress, but I'm moving in the right direction in these areas. Have you showed up as a better business leader or a worse business leader because you've worked harder on your personal goals? hundred percent better. Um, I think for two reasons, I think one is because I'm healthier, right? Like when you asked earlier about a personal one that was instrumental, my coming off of like having two kids, my morning routine was gone, like non-existent, you know, kids aren't on a very good schedule at first. And so that was when I reestablished. So I know it helps me show up better, but I also think it makes me more sensitive and aware to what's going on in my team members, personal lives in my previous life in corporate. Um, I always say it was like the 10 man, like I didn't have a heart. I was just like work, work, work. Right. Um, I remember a coworker having to leave a lot for her kid being sick and I had no concept or understanding for that. And so I wasn't helping them be their best either. Um, so I think that it allows me to be a better leader, be a better coach, be a better friend to those in the workplace. Love that. Yeah, I think that they're, they work in tandem in my world. They like push full each other. Like there's no business goals without personal goals because I use my business goals to get my personal goals. Like I, you know what I mean? Like if I want to go on a trip, I'm like, okay, great. How can I increase my income in this business this year? Like what can I implement in the business so that I can get more money personally so that I can go do that thing? Um, and I think that that's like one, just one example of how they kind of work together. Like, okay, great. How can I make sure that I can take two weeks off? What do I have to do in this business? to make sure that it's set up for me to take two weeks off and how can I make my business goals around that and vice versa. Um, and I think that, you know, that's, that's in general, how I tend to see the personal goals and business goals. I, I don't know if I've had a year where I haven't achieved both because I'm, well, other, obviously some goals I haven't achieved where I cross them off the list halfway through the year or whatever, cause they don't become important anymore. But I think in general, I do both because they both rely on each other. Yeah. I agree with that. And I think, 
I mean, that's one of our beliefs at Ops Boss Coaching, right? We use our business conversations to coach the whole person. You can't be awesome at work if you're not awesome financially and with your health and spiritually in all the different ways. Um, I also think doing all those personal goals, whether it's hiking or traveling or spirituality, whatever it is, it opens you to be more creative, more intelligent, more engaged, all the things that only benefit you at work. And if you're not doing all those things, we end up living in this world with blinders, like a horse with blinders. I asked the question, and you guys already knew the answer before I asked the question, but I asked the question because I see this in coaching all the time. We get everybody's 411s and their goal sheets, and every business goal for the week is marked off, and all the blanks are on the personal goals. So I just wanted to throw back that reminder about how important personal goals are. They power the rest of your life. Like this, this is like Hannah said, this is the important stuff. So I think we're out of time. I want to thank Hannah, Elizabeth, Jerrica for being very transparent and sharing our humanness and our personal goal setting. And I hope you guys um, chime into our Ops Boss group and share some of your personal goals there. If you got something or any of your ahas, feel free to post those in the Be A Boss group for the people that could not be here. And I hope you guys dream really big. That's our mission at Ops Boss Coaching, dream big, achieve big, and impact lives. So I hope you guys have a great week and hit all of your personal goals. So we will see you um, for Coffee with Christy next time, March, I don't remember the date, 14th with Anna Kruger. And thanks for being here and have a happy Valentine's Day. Bye, guys.